Hello, everyone. My name is Venela, and I'm a rising senior at the University of Chicago, where I work in the Anderson Lab. Today, I want to talk a little about what I've been doing as a Beckman Scholar, which is mainly developing a nickel catalyst for carbon dioxide utilization. So global CO2 emissions have been rising really rapidly, especially over the past 50 years or so. And one way people can try to mitigate that is through this strategy of carbon capture and utilization, where you use atmospheric CO2 to make fuels, plastics, and other useful chemicals. One good target for this is sodium acrylate, which we use to make superabsorbent polymers that are in a lot of really common products. And this is a reasonably large industry that could be using CO2 in its production. Right now, we make sodium acrylate from propylene, which we get from petroleum cracking. Instead, we could consider a process coupling carbon dioxide and ethylene, which are much more sustainable starting materials, especially with bioethylene. However, this reaction does require a catalyst in order to proceed, so researchers have been looking at homogeneous nickel catalysts. Here I'm showing just a simple proposed catalytic cycle of the entire process, and the intermediate in the red box is called a nickelolactone. So this really seems to be the obstacle to greater catalytic efficiencies of these nickel systems, mainly because as you see, the ring structure here turns out to be very rigid and resistant to opening and releasing free sodium acrylate. Current catalytic systems in the literature use strong bases and Lewis acids to encourage ring opening, but these additives lead to their own side reactions that decrease catalytic efficiency. So the focus of my project is to destabilize nickel lactones through mainly ligand modification, with the ligand here represented as LN. If we think about how we might encourage nickelolactones to open more easily, we can consider adding a strong steric bulk component to the supporting ligand that can disrupt the nickel oxygen bond. So this work is inspired by this phosphenopyridine ligand that has been shown to support a nickelolactone. So I was working with a phenylated version to include a bit of bulk in this, the binding pocket. However, when I went to metallate this ligand with nickel, I got an unexpected result of CH activation of the pyridine ring in the ligand. So you can see in this intermediate that has been crystallographically characterized that there is a new nickel carbon bond where there was originally a CH bond. Following this reactivity, I observed carbon-carbon coupling as the result of intermolecular homocoupling. So overall, in this dehydrogenative process, you take two CH bonds and you end up with a CC bond. And analyzing the reaction mixture, you can see that the H2 equivalent goes toward hydrogenating this co-ligand, turning cyclooctadiene into cyclooctene. So although this system is not catalytic, it does provide an example of nickel being able to mediate dehydrogenative aryl-aryl coupling, which is actually pretty rare in the literature, but still desirable if you're considering the development of more economical syntheses for complex organic compounds. So overall, we've learned a bit of mechanistic information, and we've seen how transfer hydrogenation can enable these sorts of reactivities. If we return to the idea of nickel-lactone destabilization, we can consider adding a stronger electron donation component so that the bond with the anionic oxygen ligand is disfavored. Right now, I am working with these NHC ligands, which have a divalent carbon center that can provide really strong electron donation to the nickel. These NHCs are also very modular, so you can introduce steric pressure wherever appropriate. I am working specifically with this bis-NHC ligand, which has two carbene centers for really strong electron donation, as well as these tert-butyl substituents that can provide steric pressure. 
I have been able to synthesize this series of precursor compounds, which have been reported before, followed by the synthesis of a mu nicolalactone complex. Now, this is very much a work in progress right now, but the crude data does support the assignment of the nicolalactone structure. But a lot of work needs to be done to probe its reactivity, especially toward ring opening. I can also approach this from a computation standpoint using DFT, where essentially I am looking at the single point energies of a variety of nicolalactones, where, where basically you are finding the minimum of the potential energy surface of the nicolalactone given certain geometric constraints. So here I start with a closed nicolalactone with a fixed nickel CO2 distance of 2.77 angstroms, and I gradually increase that nickel CO2 distance and scan the single point energy at each interval. If you look at the results for the this NHC system, as well as two systems in the literature, you get these trend lines where essentially I am plotting the difference in energy of the single point energies of each opened structure compared to the initial 2.77 angstrom closed structure. The actual energy values on the y-axis are almost certainly not reflective of the energies required in experimental conditions because there are a ton of experimental variables that these calculations just do not consider. However, this can serve as a sort of preliminary baseline for comparison across nicolalactone systems looking at the trend in energies of ring opening. For example, the pattern of energies for the BIS-NHC system looks very similar to that for the diphosphine system, suggesting maybe that they will behave similarly in experimental setups. However, the real strength of this approach is in evaluating a number of experimentally untested nicolalactone systems to see which ligands might be most promising for ring opening before synthesizing them in lab. In conclusion, thinking about the carbon-carbon coupling result, definitely ligand modification leads to great variability in reactivities of these sorts of nickel systems. But looking forward, catalytic trials definitely are a useful next step to test the sodium acrylate production of the BIS-NHC system and computational investigation of more ligands with a wide variety of electronic and steric properties will be useful in trying to predict trends in ring opening reactivity and figure out which ligands might be best to, to synthesize and work with in the future. In a broader sense, hopefully these NHC ligands are the key to more efficient catalysts for carbon dioxide and ethylene coupling, and in this way we might contribute to global CCU efforts. So I definitely want to thank the entire Anderson group for their support, especially John and Kate, as well as others at the University of Chicago, and of course, the Beckman Scholars Program. And thank you all for listening.